Welcome back to my little corner of the internet where we are talking about different role-playing games and uh, this time we're actually looking at a role-playing book for Dungeons and Dragons through a third party. This is the Cobalt Press's Courts of the Shadow Fae. This was written by Wolfgang Barr and Dan B uh, Dillon and I'm going to be talking about um, kind of things that I'm going to be changing in my particular module, uh, a little bird's eye view of this book. So there's going to be quite a bit of spoilers. So if you're thinking about playing this game and you don't want to be spoiled about it, or if you're thinking about um, actually running this game, uh, this is just a little bit of a spoiler warning in terms of some of the key things that goes on about it and things that I'm going to be kind of altering for my game. So first up, things some of the things that I love about this game and one of the main reasons why I picked it up. The first is definitely the setting. I love the fact that this is set in a almost like a courtyard in a uh, essentially it's the court of the shadow fate. And I I'm I'm kind of disappointed with Wizards of the Coast in not providing a a setting manual or a, a campaign guide for the Feywild. We've got a campaign for pretty much every setting, including ones that weren't a part of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, such as Ravnica from uh, Magic the Gathering, um, Wildmount from Critical Role. They put out one for um, Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, and these weren't even official Dungeons and Dragons book or settings until now, and like even Eberron and um, I mean, we've gone to official ones such as the Underdark, the Shadowfell in terms of Ravenloft, even some in terms of like the uh, Elementals with Princes of the Apocalypse. We have never gone to the Feywild, and I'm very saddened about that because that's one of my favorite settings in the Dungeons and Dragons mythos, and we don't have anything for it. Like, I've had to go to third-party sources in order to fill this much-needed gap. Like, even in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's, like, a couple paragraphs, and that's about it. Like, it's really, it's really lacking, and I'm really, really shocked that they haven't mined this environment for some really, really tasty things. So anyway, the Courts of the Shadow Fae, it's even a little bit of an offshoot because it's technically the Shadow Court, so it's not even the Summer or the Winter Court. And with his diminishing kind of mental states, uh, his power is starting to bleed into the city that was up in that until that point relatively sovereign on their own. Uh, they didn't have any fey creatures or fey presence, uh, but slowly it's starting to bleed into the city. Players um, are starting to see this and starting to see how much this shadow court is actually taking a hold of the city and essentially holding the city for ransom until they acknowledge their rightful rulers of the fey courts. Uh, they have to find their way to the fey court through the uh, Shadow Road, which is just uh, a fun adventure on their own. Uh, getting to the court, once they're at the court, they realize that it's essentially barren and empty. Uh, but getting this whole status, and I'm going to be talking about the status aspect of this game a little bit later on, but getting enough status and enough notoriety to actually be seen and see the court for who they are, and then getting an audience with the, the queen, having that audience with the queen, and then eventually getting an audience with the king. Uh, so that's kind of like the very very bare bones skeleton of this game without giving too much away because I don't want to give out too much. I always love seeing how people incorporate and change things up. So another aspect of this game that I particularly enjoy is the concept of status and using status as a, like a trackable mechanic, something to use and abuse because at the end of the day, this game is very political. It's very uh, intriguing um, and it's less where's the big monster and how do I take it down? And more, who do I play against and who do I schmooze up to to get enough status to ultimately get what I want? Uh, and so in that sense, it's very interesting. I haven't seen a game quite like this in how they role play their adventure. And this is where I actually come to one of my main concerns about this game. And one of the first things that I will bring to the forefront in where I think they needed more people on the planning and writing team. And so we have a number of credits on this, and we've got Wolfgang Barr and Dan, D Dan Dillon uh, being the main uh, designs. The uh, editor is Kim Mohan. The thing that I've noticed is all of these individuals are men. And that really shows because we really needed more women 
in the room talking to them, especially when you're dealing with part of one of the ways that you could gain status on here, which is courting some of the individuals from the Fae. And they have a really interesting, you know, set of individuals that you can court romantically engaged with, depending on who it is that you're courting. But most of them are women. Like you do have, there is a little bit of a gender swap in terms of the uh, the status, but it's interesting. the The highest individual, the minimum the the minimum status needed in order to court this individual that is kind of the same individual but one's a man and one's a female. The man you need less status to court and the woman you need more to court. It should have been the same across the board and the individuals that you have to court, most of them are women. There's only like one or two guys that you can court. So like that in and of itself is like a glaringly obvious thing that's so easy to pick up on that you just need one individual on that team to be like, guys, where's... Where's my dudes at? Like, where are my guys? I don't know, I was flabbergasted reading this. Even like when you open it up and see some of the pictures of the individuals that you can court, I was just like, wow. And maybe it's also because like most of the DMs and monster manuals for the official D&D Wizards of the Coast stuff are pretty like cognizant of that. So they're not as glaringly obvious. Like there's the main individual that you can court. like. That's that's great and that's fine, but like, where's my dudes? Where's my dudes, man? Like, where are they? I, I'm not seeing them. The only dude that you have that might be able to court is the fire dancer of Hargos, um, who's right there, but that's it, right? So anyway, that was just like a really easy thing that you can just really quickly plunk in uh, and Bob's your uncle and get done with it. That's one of the main ways that you can get status is by courting these individuals. Um, another way that you can do it is through hunting as well as dueling. So I feel like dueling and like dueling other players um, and other NPCs, uh, besting them, winning against them in the tournaments and whatnot is a major way to get status. You do, you can get more status by hunting and I think in my own game, I'm gonna make that a, a very tangible option. Uh, the other thing that I, I'm very surprised that they didn't include is some kind of um, market, because there's no way to stock up on any preserves in terms of like magical components that cost money, potions, healing stuff, weapons, things like that. There's no real place in this court which you essentially spend as I mentioned, three quarters of this campaign in, there's no place to buy or barter or trade anything in. So I would put either a grand market or some kind of a city that was very close to this place that you can then barter and sell. And that is also an area where you can have some really interesting fey interactions. Like where's the barter system? What's the money looking like? Could you trade memories for different things? Because that makes it explicitly clear in this. There's that trading memories and experiences for different things. And that's another way to even upgrade your stats. Like you could trade this beautiful memory of your first love to another person and boost their charisma score by one. You can trade this, this great medal winning athletics thing to boost up your dexterity. So there are ways that you can literally trade your personalities and uh, memories to other players to boost up their their stats, which is a, another really great mechanic for the Fey Realm to really play around with, because there's always this barter, this trading, this dealing, uh, that you're always owing somebody something uh, that I think is really cool. And having that being placed in a market setting, I think is really interesting. And I'm surprised they didn't lean on that a little bit more, just to kind of spice it up and add a little bit of a flair to flesh out the world that they're playing in. Let's see, what else did I really want to talk about in this game? The other thing is that this is a campaign for 7th to 10th level players. So it takes place relatively short, even though it is a lengthier book. Um, and it's one that you would plunk characters into kind of after they've already had a number of larger campaigns 
to go through. This isn't necessarily one that you would want to plunk new players in. So the way that I'm incorporating this with a new group, because I am starting a group in this, is I'm spending a lot more time in Zobek. I'm getting them more accustomed and having real stakes in this city for them to save. So having real relationships in the city, uh, getting personal information, having a few of the characters actually be from Zobek itself. Uh, I think tying their backstories into the city that they then need to save is very similar to the game that I just finished, which was Tome of Annihilation. I had a few players actually come from Port Narazaru or spending quite a bit of time and having characters' relationships in that port uh, that they then need to save. And I've been fiddling around a little bit. I probably will get them up to about level maybe five before I really throw them into this. Because this is one thing that, again, another thing that I really do enjoy about this book is the monsters. Because these these monsters, some of them are from the uh, Tome of Beasts or the Creature Codex from Cobalt Press. But there are a few that are very specific to this game itself that I really love. So if you have a character or a player that, uh, like the Shadow Fey Rake, for example, is in here, Revech, the Blind Seer, uh, these are all creatures that you can only really find in this book. So, as I was mentioning before, if you have a player that has essentially memorized the monster manual, uh, and even some that have memorized even, say, like the Tome of Beasts, there are creatures in here that will kind of uh, throw a wrench in their plans of like, okay, how can I take these guys out? Uh, and also, this, it, this game isn't really made for those types of players, because it's very... RP heavy. It is very role play heavy, uh, especially with gaining favors and all those kinds of things. The other thing that I really love is some of the beats that need to be hit in this. Like there's one where there's a feast uh, and that takes a lot of fun. And I love the actual menu that's on here because the menu itself is its own uh, kind of landmine. And they even said that it's a, a literal landmine. Uh, in terms of the items that they they have on here. So you need to order stuff off of this menu, and if they order the wrong thing, they're gonna have a really tough night. So I would, I would even just take that menu, see some of the things that are on that menu, and even put that into your own game. I think that's a really fun and interesting thing to throw at players and see how they kind of meddle around with that. I'm really excited to actually play this. Um, and as we play through it, I might do some updated videos of my time in this game, things I would change along the way, my lessons learned, and seeing how those things that I've changed, such as incorporating a market, putting a lot more dudes in here that they could court, and even having a lot more women in there that they can duel, because there's not a whole lot of women that they can duel on the dueling grounds. I'm really, really looking forward to playing this with my my team uh and that's courts of the shape uh the shape file shadow fey i can speak uh have you played this game what other modifications have you used how did you enjoy this game let me know all about that by commenting down below uh, and that's about it for this week's video um i hope you guys stay tuned i've got some really exciting videos coming down the pike and uh that's about it for me for now uh just keep on trucking guys uh and uh we'll catch you in the next one see ya